Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Yoga in My School podcast. My name is Donna Freeman. I am the founder of Yoga in My School and the host of the podcast. Whether you're listening or watching, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, today is a really intriguing topic that I know that if you've clicked on the title, um, that you're in for quite a treat. It's kind of a weightier topic, um, but with so much hope, I think. Uh, we're going to kind of combine a few things here, but I want to, first of all, thank everyone for listening, for liking, for sharing, for writing me with show suggestions. Um, it really means a lot. Uh, as many of you know, this is a labor of love for me. Um, I've done it for many years. And it's wonderful to be reaching new people all the time. And I do that through you, the listeners, the watchers, as you find value in this production, as it were, uh, in this conversation. So thank you very much for all that you do to share the yoga love and the yoga joy and to sprinkle it around the world in your own communities and your own areas of influence. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, and you can always find uh, me on Facebook, uh, Yoga in My School. You can find me on Instagram at yogamyschool.podcast or Donna K. Freeman, um, depending on how much of me you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you just want the podcast or you want a little bit more of the of um, of the Donna Freeman, you know, life days and life of um, that. Thanks so much. And I know many of you are longtime listeners of the show, so I really appreciate you. All right. Uh, today we have a guest who I tracked down again through a social media post. Uh, I came across my Facebook page and someone had uh, written that there was an article in a Saskatchewan newspaper. Uh, so Saskatchewan, for all of you folks uh, broader than the borders of Canada, is a province in the center of Canada, very flat for a province, <laughs> and uh, they're right beside Alberta, and I've been there a number of times running yoga teacher trainings in Saskatoon, and uh, so I was intrigued, and I was especially intrigued about this uh, to uh, topic of yoga with the indigenous populations of Saskatchewan. And so I read the article and I learned about the Saskatchewan Indigenous Yoga Association, and I had to reach out to their founders and see if they were available to have a chat. So today we are talking with the beautiful Don Laguerre and talking about the Saskatchewan Indigenous Yoga Association and all that it, the work that it does and the movement and the representation and all that goodness. But but welcome to the show, Don. Hi, thank you. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and how you came to yoga? Well, uh, my name is uh, Don DeGear. I'm from a member of the Muscadet First Nation, which is in Treaty 6 territory. I grew up in Saskatoon. And um, uh, I, I found yoga along my healing journey. Um, uh, as I was, uh, healing from addictions and from intergenerational trauma, sexual abuse, um, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I came across yoga at a fitness center and, uh, I was immediately, uh, just hooked on it. At that time, it felt like something I could be good at. It felt like something um, that was different than what I'd been accustomed to. Uh, but what I didn't know was at that time that yoga was starting me on a journey of healing that uh, I didn't even know it was starting me on. So it's been kind of like the undercarriage of my car that's been driving me around for the last 10 years. And I didn't really even, you don't think about the undercarriage of your car. Uh, and so I, I found it that way and immediately just began to have experiences in my body landing in my body um, for the first time in my life. And so now I know that, you know, I had quite a bit of dissociation um, just due to my traumas. Um, but it also began to um, touch me on the mental level as well, where it got me to ask myself deeper questions um, really pivotal, deeper questions that, you know, were the formation of, you know, the basis of my entire future and where I wanted to go with my life. And it, it was a, it was a round, um, through the movement, uh, but also through the stillness of the practice and incorporating meditation and, in, um, that, 
that really began to, to make a lot of differences in my life. Thank you. If everything that you're saying just kind of resonates with me as well. So you find it and it's like, oh, where have you been all my life? <laughs> it's like, this is good. something that I can really um, run with and, and and like all, all of the pieces kind of come together. And I'm sure that many of our listeners have had similar experiences as they've kind of arrived at their mat and then learned so much about themselves. And um, so thank you very much. And so now, you know, tell us a little bit about this Saskatchewan Indigenous Yoga Association. Why did you feel a need, not just for a Saskatchewan Yoga Association, but for an Indigenous Yoga Association? Well, there's a story of how it started, and I think that will uh, paint the picture of how it started. It was a completely organic process, as usually the best things that happen are. Um, so during those years that I had found yoga, um, I was still, I was working full time uh, at the Saskatoon Tribal Council uh, and uh, I was busy, I was working for the chief, I was running around, I had a daughter, I was doing community work, um, all kinds of things, and, um, but I'd gotten quite out of balance and I'd gotten away from my yoga practice. And I remember sitting at my desk one day and I was not in a good place at all. And I just, I put a, a prayer out there to creator. And I just said, you know, the last time I felt good and in balance, I was really rooted in a yoga practice and meditation. And uh, I said, creator, I don't know where you're going to find time to help me get back to that practice. Uh, but that's what I need. And so please help. And, and I put that out there. I kind of forgot about it. And within a few days, um, a random phone call came to me at my desk. And it was a gentleman uh, named David Edney, who is a, he's basically a yoga pioneer here in Canada. He's been doing yoga out of a book since the 60s or 70s. That's where he, he was self-taught. And um, he had uh, later in his life become a yoga instructor uh, with a passion for teaching um, seniors, but also with a passion for bringing yoga to, um, you know, marginalized communities, the healing benefits of it. He had been teaching at the Saskatoon Correctional uh, Center, and he'd also been trying to establish yoga uh, in different community centers. Um, and he, it wasn't going as well as he had thought. And, and what he believed was that if he could find uh, some Indigenous instructors um, to uh, teach at some of these places, it might resonate, the practice of yoga might resonate a little bit more uh, with the people he, who he was teaching. And so he called the tribal council looking for, um, for teachers. Uh, he had been searching for a couple of years um, and he never really found many, a very few handful of Indigenous yoga instructors. So he called the, he called the tribal council Randomly, the phone call was put through to my desk. Uh, and I think it's because they just knew that I did yoga and I was one of the only people who, who you know, outwardly practiced yoga. And, um, and the rest was history. He said, well, I wanna start a, I wanna start a, a scholarship program to teach or to train indigenous yoga instructors. And that was my moment where I just thought, you know, remembering those times in those early yoga classes where the teacher would start and the class would start to flow and I'd think that should be me up there. And then I would just rationalize it away and think like, no, no, that's not the direction for me. And, and uh, but that pivotal moment came where I just thought, you know, I think I have to take this opportunity. So I worked with David to set up that scholarship program. And um, I, fortunately, I was able to step back to arm's length to where I was uh, able to apply for it and take a scholarship myself. And so that's where I began uh, my journey uh, with this whole thing. And so from that, we trained several um, yoga instructors, I think 12 of them, just at you know, different yoga teacher trainings of their choice throughout Saskatchewan. And after that, it became um, kind of uh, a thing where some of the teachers wanted to stay in touch. Some of them wanted further training. Some of them wanted, uh, you know, uh, a community uh, of Indigenous instructors to support one another. And so David and I thought, well, why can't we start an organization 
that will help uh, you know, bring everybody together and support um, this movement that we're making. Because we've gotten such a tremendous response, especially on social media, about the scholarship program and, uh, and from the media as well. And so we just knew uh, from the energy behind the movement that this was an idea that was going to go somewhere and it was going to be lasting for a while. And so we established the Saskatchewan Indigenous Yoga Association um, as an organization to you know, support teachers. But um, primarily our focus now is on training our own Indigenous yoga instructors. Fabulous. Fabulous. I totally uh, admire David because I myself have been involved with the Dreamcatchers Conference of Indigenous Youth for many years that's held here in Edmonton at McEwen University. And every year that I put in an application to speak, I reach out to anyone that I know or who I've trained who is Métis or Indigenous, and I'm like, this shouldn't be coming from me. <laughs> this, it, it doesn't resonate when it comes from me. It needs to come from within the community, and they need to see the value from their from elders within the Indigenous community and teachers within the Indigenous community. And um, I, I know I've reached out to a number of people and they're all like, oh, I don't know if I know enough to give a conference address or to lead this. And I'm like, yes, you do. Trust me, I'll help you. <laughs> um, but invariably, I've, I've continued to give these workshops um, to youth. And, and I, I've reached out a number of times. I'm like, and a good friend of mine moved back to Ontario. And I'm just like, why did you move back to Ontario? I need you here. I need you here. But she's, of course, doing her work back there. And that's important for, for that Indigenous community that she's involved with. But I love that he reached out and he saw the value and that it would uh, ring true when, it is, when you can see yourself in the teacher's seat. Um, like you said, you know, you know I, I, I should be there. Like that's that's my seat. I, I, right? But stepping into that and taking it. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the, the importance of having um, Métis and First Nations individuals as yoga instructors? Like, why is that so important? Well, I, I mean, as we know, obviously, we're very underrepresented in most areas of society. Society, uh, but also that um, you know yoga in the West. I mean, it's very much a privileged practice, and so um, studio uh, atmospheres aren't necessarily a place that's going to attract Indigenous people. Um, indigenous people want to um, go places where it feels safe, where they feel like there's something that resonates there, where it feels like they're a part of community. Uh, where they're known, where there's friends, um, and where they see other people like them. It's we don't need more reminders of why we're different or why we're, you know, and so um, and so it's really important to have the representation uh, there of somebody who um, is experiencing the benefits of yoga, but and can actually speak to that from an indigenous lens, and um, you know also you know help us see past those mental barriers. Sometimes there's the physical barriers to yoga as well, which is something that we address as an organization or try to, uh, but there's also those mental barriers. And so uh, our approach to, to uh, bringing yoga um, to Indigenous people is to bring yoga to the community um, where people are. Let's bring yoga to where Indigenous people are rather than trying to cast a net um, to bring Indigenous people to studios and to places where they traditionally might not feel um, comfortable going. And, and not to mention many of the studio atmospheres or locations even, um, they're in places that are just kind of off the beaten path. They're maybe it might take a little bit uh, to get there. Transportation might be an issue for people. There's also the cost that might be an issue for people. Um, and and then, um, and then, yeah, to go somewhere and, and to maybe feel as though, you know, you're an outsider um, on such a deeply personal practice is something that uh, we try to just bring yoga in to where yoga, you know, can and should be. Fantastic. I love that. Um, and can you kind of address, like, it intrigues me, it has always intrigued me what I know about Indigenous culture and Métis culture and what I know about 
yoga culture and the teachings. And there are so many similarities and ways in which that they mirror one another and complement one another. And can you kind of address maybe some of the things that that you kind of where you pull those two lineages together and and from from that um, explore teachings that help people heal and uh, and discover themselves? Well, we do that in our yoga teacher training that we put on three years in a row now. And so what we do in the training is we'll bring in an elder. For the last two years, we've worked with Joseph Natau Hau, um, who is a well-known um, Indigenous elder here. Um, he's an actor and all, singer, all kinds of different things. Um, and he's really grounded in, um, in, uh, in the actual practice of yoga. He actually does yoga, which is something that's really cool. So he can bring it through for that lens. Uh, but he also... Uh, but also we bring in um, teachings of the Hindu philosophy. And so um, this year we visited the Hindu temple. We had some lectures from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Sharma and uh, his beautiful wife. They gave us a tour of the center and they talked to us about all kinds of um, Hindu uh, teachings and uh, yogic philosophy. And, um, and so what we do is we get the students um, to, uh, you know, we compare the philosophies. We don't actually try to um, fuse them or make them into one thing. So we're not looking for indigenizing yoga necessarily, but we're comparing the philosophies to find those universal truths or mm -hmm. maybe some of those maybe, um, you know, uh, smaller teachings that, that people resonate with. And so because our students come from many different Indigenous um, um, areas and, and uh, beliefs and things like that, it's up to the student to relate their own teachings um, for themselves. Uh, but overall, um, and this is the reason we do this, is being that yoga is so much about healing um, towards enlightenment. Um, and knowing your your true inner self um, as you know as the being that you are, and shedding away disillusionments and and the things that block us from our you know truest and highest self, um, you know it, many and most um, faiths, religions, cultures like they all had teachings that take you to that highest place of self as well. And so along the way through those discussions, which is a completely organic process. And the elder brings whatever comes to the elder that year. And that's what's meant to come to the elder that year. So it's not scripted. It's not, can you talk about this? Can you talk about that? And then, um, and then students draw those comparisons themselves. So overall, we're looking to um, bring people to that universal truth, that, that highest universal truth of their interconnectedness and relatedness with all of, unit, with all of creation. And and um, and so for many and most people, we hear that in our teachings, uh, but it's an intellectual knowing. We've just heard that our whole lives. It's like, yeah, of course I'm interconnected. We're all brothers and sisters, we're all whatever. But do you know that deep within you and within your experience? Have you spiritually um, grounded in that? And um, has, has your heart landed in that? And, and, and do you live from that place truly? And so many people intellectually live from that place, um, but their actions don't necessarily show that they're living from that place. And so what we're trying to do is bridge that gap and take people from their head to their heart um, into that, um, that, you know, truest foundational piece um, that's universal, I think, to many and most um, Indigenous teachings here and around the world. I love that. I love how you're looking for, you know, the universal truths. And I always light up when I see a, a truth taught somewhere and then taught and echoed somewhere else and then taught somewhere else. And it's like, we might use a little bit different vocabulary or symbolism, but there are those beautiful universal truths. And then inviting each individual along their personal practice and their journey to, to find what resonates with them, um, I think is, is, you know, truly the epitome of, of both cultures that you are working with um, and a really beautiful way of bridging 
gaps and building community. I love it. Love it. Um, Absolutely. All right. Uh, so can you give us, you know, now that you've, you've kind of explained to our listeners about the program, the scholarships, the training, um, what people might expect uh, as they go through their training, but can you give us examples of some of your graduates and what they are doing and the impact that they're having in their communities? Like, is there not, I'm, I'm sure that they're not all staying right in Saskatoon and, and teaching there, but they're going back and out into their their communities and you know just the I run trainings and everybody goes out and and does their thing and it's so great to be able to follow them and see the impact that they're having but what are some of the impacts that graduates of the of your scholarship and of your teacher training what are they doing well we've been training for three years and so um i think a lot of what's going on is actually just yoga catching a base foundation in communities because yoga is brand new to many or most communities because there's never been a yoga instructor there's never been a yoga studio there's never been anything um, sometimes you know a yoga instructor would come and visit a community for four or five days three four five days uh, but then they would leave again and so our approach is to actually embed the yoga in the community so that yoga has a has a home and a place there on a, to offer a regular uh, yoga practice. And so I think that's a part of the challenge of our teachers is to number one, educate people on what yoga is, because most people think it's just stretching, as we know, uh, or an exercise program, but also on like, what are those benefits of yoga? Um, and, and so, but we're starting to see an emphasis in our communities on healing and alternative Th uh, therapies and somatic therapies and different kinds of things um, that that you know can complement um, you know traditional therapies, and so um, yoga is something that uh, is popping into a lot of like community events and things like that, and so it's really cool. But in our training, we've trained now um, four uh, therapists who are um, you know incorporating yoga into their. Um, you know, healing circles, um, into their therapy practices with groups and things, survivor, survivor groups uh, for therapy. Um, and it, it's really just because we know that, I mean, yoga has um, this ability to somatically release trauma from the body, whereas you can't really do that intellectually. We, we have to approach everything in a holistic manner. So that's something that's really exciting to me. Um, to see it being tackled um, in that way. Uh, but then we also have teachers, so many teachers that we've trained who are bringing yoga right into their classrooms, mindful moments, uh, introducing the kids to this practice, like right from the early on onset. Uh, we have people who've uh, worked in daycares. We've also had people who've started their own little yoga businesses, uh, running right out of their home community. Um, we've had people who were students and they, they went and taught classes um, to their university peers on campus, uh, you know, you name it. We just had so many places um, that it's just really, really cool to see. And, um, and, and, and others who are just, they just want to start a community group just for people like them, you know, so gentle yoga for, you know, the aging woman or um, all these kinds of different things. And so it's really cool. This year we emphasized accessible yoga pretty heavily. We've been moving in that direction since the beginning because we realized that traditional vinyasa yoga just isn't accessible for everybody. And especially people who are brand new to yoga, most people can't do a lot of that stuff. And so um, we've got moved into a gentle and accessible. So we incorporated a chair yoga certificate within our training this year. And we also incorporated a, a youth or vinyasa yoga for youth um, uh, certificate into our training this year so that we can reach and make yoga accessible to as many people in the community as possible, not just those who are capable physically or, or fit or, or whatever, right? So I'm really excited after this year to see where yoga goes and, and how the impacts, you know, change and shift from here. Yeah, I love it. I love that ripple effect of everyone. They take it back and then they do their thing and, and it just keeps going out in waves. And uh, that's awesome. I love um, the, the accessible 
yoga movement. I'm huge <laughs> supporter of that. And just everything that you say about the somatic release and, and the healing that is available when we use these tools is, is um, really important. Um, and that kind of brings us around to um, September 30th. Uh, so September 30th is um, for those of you who may not be in Canada and are listening, but the Canadian government uh, announced this year a new federal statutory holiday. Um, September 30th is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And, um, and this uh, day is a day for us to honor and recognize residential schools and the survivors and the children who who were part of that, um, that process and their families and the impact that it has had on the Indigenous community. Um, and I think it's a really good first step, um, just the recognition, the national holiday. I think there's also a lot of um, questions being asked because some of the provinces are not recognizing it as it's kind of this optional day, which is what's happening in Alberta and Saskatchewan. I'm in Alberta, you're in Saskatchewan, and it's a kind of an optional holiday. Um, so um, wondering if there's anything that you are doing for, um, for National Day of Truth and Reconciliation and any suggestions that you would offer for us all on that day. Oh, that's a great question. So we were talking about how we can bring yoga, a yoga event out into the community. And so what we're going to do is something online. Uh, so we do have a community yoga program that's just getting ramped up again to start um, right at the first week of October. But we're going to kick that off uh, with a short yoga event uh, on the 30th in the evening. And so we're going to have uh, a couple instructors just sharing to um, just sharing the platform to, you know, honor uh, our process as Indigenous people, honor what yoga can do for us, and then move into a practice and meditation and a practice. And so, um, so anybody's welcome to join us. Uh, the uh, information will be out on social media on our Facebook page, and I can give you all that information uh, later. But our, but our Facebook page is um, CS. Saskatoon, S-I-Y-A Saskatoon, and you can find information there or on Instagram, uh, which is um, at SK Indigenous Yoga. Fantastic. And will that be like uh, via Zoom or something like that? Like uh, with broadcast that anyone anywhere can join in? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. And what do you know what time it's happening on the 30th? That will be at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So I think right now we're still on the same time zone as you, Donna. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Saskatchewan is the lucky province. They don't have daylight savings time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're busy, we do. And so all those people who are getting a, an education in, uh, in Canadian culture and uh, politics and <laughs> time zones, as you're listening today, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> All right. And, and so the second half of my question is what, other than joining in on your practice and honoring um, and supporting you and, and your organization, what else can people do if they are um, celebrating and honoring um, this day of truth and reconciliation? What are some of the suggestions that, that you can think of for us to do with our children and our families and our communities? Well, the orange shirts are, are a great representation um, of support so even driving around Saskatoon you see many houses with just an orange shirt just uh, hung up outside and a teddy bear on the step um, and so what we're honoring here I mean truth and reconciliation but we're also honoring um, the the children who have been unearthed and um, that grieving process that's co collectively happening um, and we're also, so the orange shirt day is a really big uh, deal right now. So orange shirts are really great. Um, but if there is a community event, a public community event in your community, like don't be afraid to attend it and to show your support. Um, and, and don't be afraid to keep talking about it because what we're noticing is that, you know, 
the discussion is beginning to get really quiet. And, um, and so we want to keep this as something that's open and discussed um, because it's not something that's just supposed to go away. Um, I think it's something that we need to, you know, keep alive and keep open for our healing process until, you know, the right, what, whatever the right process is that needs to happen will happen. Um, and so, uh, but I know that there's a lot of movements also happening or events and things that are that are raising funds um, for the uh, residential school survivors society, I believe they're called and, and that kind of thing. So there's multiple ways that you can, but usually like a school or something that you're tied to will have some sort of um, event happening that you could get involved in. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. And I do encourage people to um, to take some time on September 30th to honor the children and the families uh, of the residential schools. And uh, and like you say, this collective mourning, it, uh, it touches many of us and uh, it has a huge impact. And I think that, like you say, whatever will happen will happen. It will be a process of healing and you can never really predict how that is going to happen in your own life never mind on a huge uh, community um, and nationally um, type of process so uh, I, I love the first steps and let's keep this conversation going definitely so thank you so much Dawn I really appreciate your time your poise and your mission I, I support you wholeheartedly and the more the more people that we can get involved the the more individuals can be touched for good thank you Thank you, Donna. It's been wonderful to be here. All right. Appreciate everybody listening, watching. Definitely join in on um, September 30th at 7 p.m. for the practice. And, um, and wear an orange shirt on September 30th, wherever you are in the world. Wear an orange shirt in honor of the children and the families of the residential schools. And I know I will be wearing my orange shirt that day. And I have the day off. And so I will be... Uh, doing my own honoring um, in my own way. So thank you. And uh, thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, again, like, share. Let's keep this conversation going. Send me your comments. Reach out to Dawn if you have questions or if you'd like to support them in their scholarship program. It's really, really important work. And, uh, and the ripples will continue to, to flow and have an impact uh, for many, many generations. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again next time.